Yesterday, the Braves signed Whit Merrifield, and today, well, he's he's on the IL. This is uh, this. I mean, this must be the the least lucky season in history for the Braves. I'm trying to think of a worse situation. Let's get into it. Arno will throw down a second, and unfortunately, it goes into the field. back. It looks actually looks like the wrist just from a tag. Michael, unfortunately, also feeling some discomfort. Ronald Acuna Jr. limps off gingerly. Some unloads one to center field deep, and that's a fair ball down the line. That is that one is hit out toward right a line drive. Welcome back to the Touching Bases Podcast. Great to see your beautiful, smiling faces. If you're new here, consider subscribing and give a like at the end if I've earned it. If I haven't, leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree, but we're going to get into some stuff, but it's leading up to a very good outcome if the Braves follow through. The Braves. ATL. As Tommy Boy would say, holy shnikes. Has this been a hell of a season? When I say that, I mean it's been hell for the Braves season. Not only have they gone to the World Series favorites to maybe not make in the playoffs, now I understand they're two and a half games above everybody in the wild card, but now may have to trade away prospects to desperately replace the laundry list of injuries. At the beginning of the season, Spencer Strider was the 2024 predicted Cy Young Award contender. After a couple starts, he took a break because his elbow was sore. Turns out he had a full UCL tear and underwent Tommy John. That deemed him out for the season, and luckily, I guess on the positive side, it's uh, it's a beginning season, so next year, he can pitch. Okay, well, cutter losses is what it is. But we did trade for Chris Sale. Max Fried is a solid arm, and we still have one of the best offenses in the NL. This is great. I mean, it's not great, but we can we can pull through. We can figure this out. Fast forward not too much longer later, 2023 NL MVP Ronald Acuna Jr. Coming off a 40-70 season, takes a secondary lead and twists his knee, returning back to second to only collapse. Turns out he had a tear in his AC. Needed surgery, rendering him out for the rest of the season and the beginning of 2025, maybe after spring training. <sighs> okay, so two stars gone, still plenty of offense. Okay, not long after, Michael Harris II was just running to third base on a base hit by Ozzy Albies and feeling something wrong in his hamstring. Well, he goes down with a grade two hamstring strain. Now, this was reverted back to like a grade three, but at the time he was in a lot of pain. They realized that he won't have to be out as long as he needs to, but he's still on the IL and not playing going through the All-Star break. Well, we got Duvall in the offseason and we traded Seattle for Kellenek, so we're covered. Wait, that's three with Rosario, Duvall. Duvall at Kellenic. We have an outfield with major league level players. Not elite, but okay. Well, let's not get too comfortable. 48 hours later, Hurston Waldrip is announced to have an elbow inflammation and will be out for an unspecified amount of time. What? But we have Max Fried and Ronaldo Lopez has been a stud in the rotation. Thank God. The people that need to pick it up and stand up while we lose some of the best of the best on this team, they're, they're doing their job. So no reason to completely lose our minds yet. But at this point in the season, offensively, the Braves have been kind of shorted by Austin Riley, who was the talk of the league in 2023, and he just isn't really performing like he did last year, and we're looking for him to heat back up. We'll get back to Riley in a little bit. In the meantime, how about another kick in the dick? Max Fried gets moved to the IL after warming up in the All-Star game, feeling discomfort in his forearm. After pitching his relief session at the All-Star game, the Braves had to put him on the IL for forearm nuitris. I had a look up what that was that is not something that heals fast so if i'm a braves fan now it's time to panic we are now down two major offensive bats and defensive stars three of our best pitchers are out in the rotation. That's it, right? <laughs> uh, I wish. On July 21st, Ozzy Albies goes to cover a throw down to second during a steal attempt and reaches out to grab the ball, but the runner slides into his hand, fracturing his wrist. He is now officially out for eight weeks. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? So we are two weeks from the trade deadline. The Phillies DFA'd Whit Merrifield, a seasoned second baseman that can play outfield and third. Braves need to fill a spot at this point. Let's grab Whit, we can afford him, and we'll be good. So it's Monday the 22nd of July. We will make the trades for the outfield to get us back on track and hold the two and a half game lead in the wild card. This is this is what Alex is thinking in the front office. It's gotta be, it's gotta be what, I mean, this has to be the plan at this point. Fast forward. One day, July 23rd, Whit Merrifield has been deemed day to day with a right finger injury while taking infield reps prior to his first game as a Brave. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Alex Anthopoulos must be looking up for God to explain why. 
Why me? Dude. So let's recap. Acuna, Harris, Albies, Freed, Strider, Waldrip, and Merrifield. Oh, remember when I said I will come back to Austin Riley? He's not only been kind of disappointing this season, but he's now out on paternity leave. Don't get mad at me in the comments. I know you will. I mean, congrats to him. I'm happy that he's able to grow his family and it's a big moment for him in his life. But I can guarantee you the front office behind closed doors is asking, why now? Couldn't you, couldn't you have had a baby in November? So this is what I propose. And I think that some of you Braves fan will probably like this idea. As you guys saw the thumbnail, you already know what's coming, but there's more. I honestly think the Braves are going to gun for Jazz Chisholm Jr. He is a second baseman by trade, but plays mostly in the outfield now. This plug second base till Ozzy Albies can come back. Harris will be back in a couple weeks. Rosario will cover center. Till then, once Albies is back, Jazz can go take right field, which brings some life back to the defense and the lineup. Now, I know it's not Acuna, but it's better than Rosario and Duvall. No offense to them. Jazz has been pretty damn good this season, and he stayed relatively healthy. A lot of people are concerned with Jazz's clubhouse persona, but but I'd be dead honest with you. I don't think this is going to be a problem just because that clubhouse is loaded with talent and he won't really have much of an impression if he's going to be a jackass. Think about it. You have Matt Olson, who's legendary now. Marcelo Zuna, who will probably kick his ass if he says anything stupid. And then you have Austin Riley, who's probably a good clubhouse help. And Acuna is still around and that's the MVP of the NL. So I don't think we're going to have to worry about his persona being an issue in Atlanta. Comment below what you think about Jazzy Boy if you're a Braves fan. If you're not a Braves fan, is it your team that you want them to go to? On top of Jazz, I think they should get a pitcher. Doesn't have to be anybody blockbuster big. We're not talking crochet or, or scooble. It's just got to be someone who can eat innings and give their offense a chance. They have lost three arms so far, and they're in need of replacements. What I would offer? Tyler Anderson. He's a left-handed pitcher with the Angels. He made his second All-Star game at age 34, which has been a 2.81 ERA over a 100. 112 innings. So he's put in the work and he's given up less than three runs per outing. He isn't crazy strikeout pitcher, but the defense in Atlanta, I think will be sufficient enough for his style. Chris Sale is the only other lefty in the rotation as of this video and adding a second will help mix things up for, for whoever is to play against the Braves moving forward. That is all I have for you guys today. Before you go, subscribe if you haven't already, like the video if you made it this far and comment below your thoughts and why or why not the Braves should pick up Jazz. I think it'd be a good fit and I think at this point, they'll be pretty aggressive to grab them in the next seven days. If you guys are watching this after July 31st, if it did happen, called it. If it didn't happen, do you wish it did? Or, or is there another opportunity that the Braves could have taken to better this team? We'll see because that's in the future. And until then, I'll see you on the next one. Later.